Amen. If you don't know me, my name is Chuck Callahan, missionary to the U.S. military in Japan. It's an honor to be here. Amen. Uh, when we come to the States, it's always a place we look forward to coming. Amen. Uh, I joke with you. I mess with most of you. Amen. And uh, you're fun because we feel like we're part of the family here. Amen. And I can't get rid of that thing. So anyway, and, uh, but we enjoy being here. We are honored tonight to have some guests with us. My wife, if you don't know this, is Jeanette Beach's cousin, amen? Uh, it's not Beach, though, it's Anderson, amen? And uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting there going, I just made a mistake, but anyway, and, uh, but they're cousins, and their aunts are here tonight, Aunt Lily and Aunt Jean, Aunt Jeannie, amen? And uh, we are so honored to have them here tonight, amen? And then my cousin Rodney and Sally are here with their friend John. Uh, now, I was the best man at their wedding. I mean, truly the best man. <laughs> <laughs> but amen. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, we grew up here in Ohio. My wife is from the south end of Columbus. I'm from Millersport out there. Amen. Everybody know where Millersport is? <laughs> Most people in Millersport don't even know where it's at. But anyway, but if you have your Bibles tonight, go ahead and start looking for Nehemiah chapter 2 and Nehemiah chapter 2. But in 1978, I went over to Lancaster and joined the United States Army, and I was off and running. Amen. And in 1990, I retired from the Army. And in 2002, we got to Japan, and we became missionaries to the U.S. military over there. Uh, my life verses, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also received. And that's very important, that I first received. Amen? What? That Christ died for our sins, according to Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to Scriptures. You see, it was a, it was a missionary to the military in Germany that led me and my wife to the Lord. So you can just kind of say missions is in our blood, amen? And I want to encourage you tonight in missions. And the way I'm going to encourage you is in your own personal walk, amen? amen. Too many times we let other people, circumstances, and things interfere with our Christian walk, amen? amen? I've been married to my wife almost 36 years, Amen. She has put up with me for many things, amen? She has followed me all over the United States, Texas, Louisiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, where else, uh, someplace else, amen? And she followed me twice over to Germany, then she follows me to Japan, amen? Either this woman has no life or she just wants to serve the Lord, amen? So I sit there and I, I, and I think about all that, and, and one of the things, if anybody ever came between me and my wife, Amen? You can do anything to me, but don't you dare talk about my wife or kids. But how come we allow people to come between us and God? How come we allow people to talk about our God? Amen? It's a great opening, isn't it? All right? Anybody know what today is? D-Day. June 6, 1944. They went across the English Channel. Amen? Normandy, the invasion, the great freedom setting event of the century amen this guy is in an airplane and he jumps out he's a paratrooper with the 101st airborne division whoop amen it's been three years with him ah it's awesome amen he hits the ground and he loses his weapon and he walked up to a sergeant he said sergeant i lost my weapon i don't know what to do sergeant gives him a broomstick says go fight the enemy how many of you ever been in the military? Don't make too much sense, does it? Amen? <laughs> so the guy says, Sergeant, what am I supposed to do? He says, we can see the enemy go bang. So he's uh, going through Normandy, and he's shaking. And he sees a German, and he goes, bang, and he drops. <laughs> Keeps walking, sees another German, bang, drops. Whoa. He gets bold. He goes, bang. Bang, bang, Germans dropping everywhere, amen? This guy comes up over the hill, he goes, bang! The guy didn't stop, he kept coming. Oops. Bang, 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 kept coming, kept coming. The guy come up to him, grabbed him, threw him on the ground, went boom, boom! Tankity, 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 tankity. <laughs> like that, amen? Now that would be silly, wouldn't it? So how come we as Christians go out into a war where there's the greatest battle that's ever been, been fought 
for people's souls with a broomstick. Why do we do that? Amen? Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah was in the palace at Shushan and he heard about the walls of Jerusalem being broken down. The defense of the city was broken and he was broken hearted about it. And we read in Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17. If you will stand with me for the reading of God's word in honor of his word and who he is. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17. The Bible says, Then said I unto them, who? The people gathered, the people that were in front of him. Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Let us pray. Father, we just ask that you honor your word tonight. You said it won't go out, and it would not return void. Father, tonight we're asking for a special time tonight, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts and our spirits. Lord, there's people that come here expecting and waiting and, and, and want to hear your word. And there's other people that are thinking about tomorrow, thinking about today, thinking about tonight, and thinking about other things. Lord, would you get their attention tonight? Would you just be with us? Because we cannot do anything without you. Lord, strengthen this mighty army tonight that we may go into the battle equipped with strong hands. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Thank you. How many of you would say this world is in distress? How many of you read the nightly news or saw the nightly news? Amen. We're, we're in a mess, aren't we? This world's in a mess. Uh, we, we've got conspiracies. We've got things going on in Washington. We've got things going around the world. Uh, just a, a month ago, somebody took our credit card and bought a bunch of liquor in Washington, D.C. Amen. My wife called me and said, what did you buy at Marlin's Liquor? I said, huh? Amen. It wasn't me, honey. Amen. Somebody got our card number somewhere, amen, and went out and had a blast with it. Amen. We, we live in a world that just is in distress. Amen. Uh, I don't like to go out anymore. Amen. Somebody asked me, if you ever moved back to America, what would be the first thing you did? And I told my buy a gun. Amen. <laughs> And I was in the military for 20 years. It's not going to be something to tickle you. It's going to be something to stop you. Amen. And I sit here today and I think, man, we are in a land and world of distress. Christianity is on the fence. The U.S. Supreme Court just backed the baker. Amen. But what did they say? They didn't say he had religious freedom. They just said that they went about it wrong. That's what they really said. So it gave them unction to go out and do it better. So the next person comes along, they'll be more ready. You know our enemy is more prepared to fight us than we are to fight them? That's the truth, amen? Nehemiah said, this place is in distress. The walls are broken down. The gates have been burnt. We're in trouble, people. But verse 18, I love verse 18. It says, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. In 1986, my God came into my life, and his son Jesus Christ saved me on May 29th. Amen? 9B Lundegardenstrasse, apartment 18. I'll never forget the night, because my wife was across the table from me, and she bowed her head at the same time. And all through these years, she's grown, I've grown, she's grown, she's grown, she, I grow, amen? And, and, and it seems like I'm either trying to catch up with her or... or, or we're, look, God's been good to us, amen? We, we've spent years over in Japan. He's been good to us. We've seen people saved and lives changed. We were just at a house in Texas where somebody that we led her to the Lord and baptized her and discipled her, and she's growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And she, she's, she's an incredible Christian lady. And her husband, who was backslidden, is now serving the Lord for His praise and glory. Amen? God has been good to us. Amen? Amen. And then I'll tell the old Baptist joke. He's been good. Amen? I'm overseas trying to lose weight and get in shape and come back to the States. I've gained 10 pounds already. Amen? It's crazy. Amen? 
But I can tell you this, my God's been good to me. I have no complaints. Some things happened overseas. People come up to me and said, Brother, are you okay? I said, yeah, why? Well, I heard what happened. Oh, did you hear my God got off the throne? Well, no. Oh, did, did you hear I lost my salvation? Well, no. Uh, did, 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 you, did you hear that, that the Bible's not true? Well, no. Then what'd you hear? Well, we heard some people. You mean sinners? That need the grace of God in their life? I'm sorry. I'm doing okay because my God is still on the throne. The Bible is still true and my salvation is sure. Amen? I, I, I'm not in distress. I'm okay. Amen? But I can tell you, isn't the world in distress? And Nehemiah said, it's in distress. And then he started telling them about how good his God was to him. How many of us can say God is good? Amen? God is good. Do we live it? Amen? We'll just move on. Don't want to hurt you. Amen? Amen? And this says, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And this is what I love. And they said. And they, the preacher gets up here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. If you only come Sunday morning, uh, you've listened to 52 messages. Come Sunday morning, Sunday night, 104 messages. You come all three services a week, a week 156 messages. You've heard a lot of word. Amen? You've heard a lot of word. But how many times have you stood up and said, and preacher, we want to reply. We, we, when's the last time the altars were full? Amen? When's the last time you stood up and said, Preacher, I heard that message tonight from God, and I'll stand up. Because you see the next one, it says, And they said, Let us arise and build. Let us rise and build. Amen? The preacher doesn't build the church. The church builds the church. Preacher can't win all the souls. It takes all of us. Amen? And Nehemiah, he told them of how good God was. Then he told him what the king had said to him. And then they said. So tonight I want to challenge you. They said. I'm talking about you. The church. Let us rise up and build. Amen? Let us rise up and build. Let us stand up and say glory to God. God has been good to me. Amen? God has saved my soul. My security is in Him. My strength is in Him. But then... And this is the verse that we're, the, the idea that we're going to concentrate on tonight. That last sentence. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. I'm in a lot of churches. On Sunday, I'll be in Luling, Louisiana. I just like saying that. Amen? <laughs> Luling, amen? Luling, Louisiana. I love it, amen? It's right outside uh, New Orleans, Amen? And then I'm going to be in Leesville, Louisiana. And then we go into Texas, and I have no clue where we're going to be there, but we're going to be all over the place, amen? But I know this, on July 1st, we're going to be in Dumas, Texas. Anybody know where Dumas, Texas is? <laughs> yeah, I had to go out of that way to get it there, amen? Anyway, and then the following week, I'm going to be, or on 4th of July, I'm going to be in Hereford, Texas. And then on July 8th, I'm going to be in Delhart. Anyway, I'm going to be all over the place, amen? I'm going to be in a lot of churches. Can I tell you I've seen some good works? Can I tell you I've seen some people stand up and say, let's rise and build? Can I tell you I've seen some good things, amen? That one of the good things I've seen is Bible Baptist Church in Grove City, Ohio. Amen? This is a good work. I was here for the Fun Fest. I've seen a good work, amen? This is a good work. But are your hands strong? Are you ready for the building? Are you ready for the work? Now, you may say, well, you don't understand my life. You don't understand my circumstances. I'm not your Savior. I'm not your God. I don't need to. Because your strength is in Him, not me. Your strength is in Him, not the pastor. Your fortress, your salvation, your word, your eternity is all in His hands. So you may come up with excuses for us, but next time you want to give an excuse, go to God. And say, God, I can't do this because you made me this way. I'd back off of that one real quick, amen, you know. Because <laughs> we're fearfully and wonderfully made, amen. 
And I can tell you this, God did make me this way. And I praise God for that. And when people call me short, I remind them of this one thing. Preacher, I remind them of this thing. Jesus went to Zacchaeus, the short guy. He sent David to kill the tall guy. So you can call me short all you want. God likes me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I saw some tall people and they're going, I don't like that. <laughs> anyway. So, anyway. <laughs> but look, we got to understand that we need to have strong hands for the battle. Amen. I spent 20 years in the United States Army. Not every morning at 5 o'clock did I wake up thinking, wow, man, I get to go in and do push-ups, set-ups, and run two miles. This is just going to be a glorious day, amen? Oh, wow, we got a 12-mile road march today. Let me put that rucksack on, that helmet, that weapon, those combat boots, and let me go out there in sweltering heat in Louisiana and march 12 miles. Oh, glory, amen? Right? Hey, every Friday, four-mile run, battalion run. Uh, 18th Airborne says do it in 36 minutes. Well, that's not good enough because Brigade says do it in 32 minutes. But then Battalion says do it in 30 minutes. So our commander says, hey, we do it in 28 minutes. Why? <laughs> Anybody ever heard of the Patriot missile? Okay. That's the front line. That's where the battle's going on. This is the Patriot. There's nothing behind us except the Air Force. <laughs> when they get to me, I'm not sitting there shooting a gun. I'm sitting there going, hello. Amen? Because the war's over. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out there doing all this stuff, not understand, but I know this. If I was going to be in the military, I had to be strong. I had to know my weapons. I had to know how to use them. I, and my weapons were my feet. My hands, my back, and sometimes even my brain. Amen? If I did that for the United States Army, why would I not do that for God? i got to strengthen my hands. Amen? I want to give you five areas that you can strengthen your hands in. Go with me to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Say amen when you get there. Oh, okay, we'll wait. Where's that water at? Ooh, amen. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8 says this. Or 18, I'm sorry. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. I'm going to give you a Christian calisthenic. Pretty cool, huh? Y'all do with me. Okay. Group attention. And cadence. One. Two. Three. Now, if you got your iPhone out there, you know, just, you know, just. Anyway. <laughs> but we can strengthen our hands by opening the Bible. Now, I'm going to tell you why we're afraid to do that. Because we're afraid of what it says. We're afraid of what it might tell us to do. We're afraid that God might call us out of our comfort zone. Amen? Can I tell you, the military many times called me out of my comfort zone. Amen? I was at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They threw me out of a helicopter on a rope. It's called air assault. Repelling. Whee! Amen? I got two bad knees now. But anyway... And then, they put me on a helicopter with a 100-foot rope with a harness on the end. And they put me in that harness, and the helicopter took off and flew 500 feet. Let's see, 500 minus 100. 400 feet in the air, I'm flying under this chopper. Wondering, why am I here? This makes no sense, amen? It was not my comfort zone, Amen? This is my comfort zone, amen? Two feet on the ground, that's good. I was thinking, if that helicopter's going up and it's coming back down, why do I have to beat it? You know, that didn't make sense, right? Many times in the military, when those guys were going across in D-Day, they were out of their comfort zones, amen? 
You know why we're losing the battle, Christian, and why the world's in such distress? Because Christians don't like being out of their comfort zone. We need to get out of our comfort zone. We're afraid to read the Bible because we're afraid of what it's going to say. It may tell us to go tell somebody about Him. It may tell us to be a witness for Christ. It may tell us to get more involved in our local church. We're afraid of what it's going to say, amen? Second, through prayer, 1 Timothy 2.8. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. The second one is through prayer. Through prayer. Putting our hands, praying to God, lifting up. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2.8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. We need to praise God, amen? We don't need to hold back. We need to shout sometime, amen? And I sit here and I think, lift up holy hands, what? In prayer. Matthew 26, verse 14 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Amen? But then it goes in and says, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We're weak people, aren't we? But does not the Bible say that we can do all things through Christ which strengthen us up? Amen? Isn't he our strength, our fortress, and our power? But yet through prayer, we go to prayer to God and we watch on TV and we listen to some, some ch churches and preachers and say, say, go to God and command. I'm not commanding nothing of God because I don't owe God nothing but everything. Why? Because He's given me everything. He's given me salvation. He's given me joy. Amen? He's given me a wonderful wife and kids. Amen? And... and <laughs> We're in church. But anyway, so, uh, look, he's given me everything. I'm not going to go to him and demand nothing. I have no right. But he says, if you ask. He says, do it in the right spirit and in the right way, and he'll give me everything. Somebody say, well, I asked God for a million dollars. I told him I'd tithe and give to missions. He gave you $10, you didn't do it with it. Why would he give you a million? <laughs> Amen. He says, tithe, you give me one, I'll give, give you nine. Say, but the government, the government ain't got nothing to do with God. And they're making that quite clear more and more. Amen. Hey, look, God says he'll take care of you if you allow him. Trouble is, we depend on ourselves and each other more than we depend on him. Amen? How can we strengthen our hands through the Bible, through prayer? And number three, <laughs> through giving. Now, go with me to that famous and most uh, Baptist favorite verse, Malachi 3.8. Amen? Malachi 3.8. Malachi 3.8. There's a question that's asked here. In Malachi 3, it says, Will a man rob God? Let's just stop. Yes. We will. Amen? I've done it. You've done it. And by the way, this message tonight is coming from an imperfect person to an imper uh, imperfect people through a perfect God. Amen? Will we rob God? I have robbed him many times. Now, in this context, though, they ask the question, Will a man rob God? It says, yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. And then it gives the cure. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now you say, well, that's about tithing. No. That's about where did they rob God. My question is, where have you robbed God? Have you robbed Him in your Bible reading? Have you robbed Him in your prayers? Have you robbed Him in your praise? Have you robbed Him in your worship? 
Amen. You come to church and you have hardly sing songs. Hey, I praise God for Dr. Yoder getting up here tonight. You know why? It's not easy. I'd rather preach. I, I had this guy say, well, anytime you get in the pulpit, you ought to be nervous. And I got scared about that because I'm not nervous. I'm excited. Amen. <laughs> but guess who leads songs in Japan? <laughs> not a good thing. Amen. <laughs> I tell my people, you either sing loud and listen to each other or sing low and listen to me. They sing. Amen? <laughs> you get that in a minute. But anyway, can I tell you, it's not easy getting up there and doing stuff like that. Amen? To a people that half-heartedly follow you. No amens on that one? Amen? I thought again, amen, right? Listen, when we have to do things, we're... Robbing God. When we go out passing out tracts or soul winning or we go out to witness and we have to do it because we don't believe God's going to do anything, we are robbing God. When we come to church and half listen to the message, we are robbing God. And then come time for the invitation when we don't respond to it, we're robbing God. It's not just about tithes and offerings. It's about this right here, our heart. How many of us say, God, you can have everything except? God, you, you, don't, don't mess with that area. Be like me going to my wife and saying, honey, I want to give you my whole heart. Except, <laughs> golf has the rest. <laughs> if you've seen my golf game, you'd say that was silly, amen? But yeah, it happens, amen? You say, you can have all my heart. But, but you know, the, the team, the, the, the job, the... No, she's got my whole heart. But does God have our whole heart? Do we rob God in our giving of our praise, worship? Do we rob God of our voice of singing? He said make a joyful no noise, not a happy, or a happy one, not, not a good one. Amen? See, I was in the army, and I know this. We'd sing cadence, right? He'll lift, he'll lift, he'll lift, proud or lift. I don't sing cadence because I can't sing. Amen? But we had some guys get out there. And I know this, when you got 100 guys out there and, and, and marching, it doesn't matter if they got good voices. When you put 100 voices together, it is awesome. Amen? Yeah. I can tell you this, I don't care who's leading songs tonight, when we put our voices together, it can be awesome. When we lift our voices up to God and not worry about who's on our left or who's on our right or who's in front and who's back, you know what I'm intimidated by? Preachers that can sing and preach. That's just not right. Amen? <laughs> Pastor Slayball's not right, amen? He can sing and preach, amen? I think you ought to only have one gift, amen? And that, just leave it at that, amen? It makes the rest of us look bad, right? Amen? You know? But, but I'm sitting here telling you tonight, look, it doesn't matter who leads songs, it doesn't matter who's preaching when it's God's word and God's song and his praise. Are we robbing God? Do we give it all? I challenge you. Next Sunday morning when Pastor Slayball stands up here, sing your hearts out. Amen. I'm going to tell you what will happen. Pastor Slayball, to me, is one of the best preachers I've ever heard. He'll preach better. Yeah. Amen. You get out there and you shout a little bit and get excited. I'm, I'm going to say something. I've debated all week of saying this or not. Last week, a missionary letter was written, uh, read. In that letter, two souls were saved. I said, amen. And this church sat there. Do you realize two souls, eternities, were changed? Missionary letter gets up here, his two souls saved. Amen! God bless him. Can we pray for them? Oh, man, we need... Hey. You know what we did? We robbed God of his praise. Because he's the one that saved them. Amen? Let's not rob God. Boy, when you hear a missionary letter and hear somebody got baptized, saved, let the Lord know that he did a great thing. Amen? I go over there, I baptized Johnny. He's from Ohio. His mom and dad and, and grandparents were there. It was awesome. It was great. It was a blessing. It was huge. And I was so disappointed when my church didn't get up and shout like it was a Super Bowl. I was like, man, I need to teach these people better, amen? 
Hey, somebody get saved here? Man, if it just doesn't make you just want to have a fit, maybe you need to stop robbing God of your Bible reading, of your prayer, and of your praise. Amen? You got to get excited. Amen? We're only halfway through the message. You having fun yet? All right. Amen. Number four. Go with me to Exodus chapter 17, verse 9. Exodus chapter 17, verse 9. Exodus chapter 17, verse 9. Brother Moreland, that's Old Testament. You help that person. I just thought I'd help you out. It's the Old Testament. Exodus. <laughs> Private jokes don't even work. Amen. But anyway, Exodus chapter 17, verse 9. Exodus chapter 17, verse 9 says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out fight with uh, Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses said, had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur, excuse me, went up to the top of the hill. Had white castles for lunch. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. You know it's easier to put down than to build up, and it's easier to tear apart than put together? You know that? When you come to church, if all you're thinking about is what's wrong with your life, you may miss the opportunity to help somebody else in their life. We're here to build each other up and to hold up each other's arms and, and to pray for each other and to love each other and, and to, to worship together and to praise together. It's not a time to build people down or tear people down. It's time to build us up. We come to church sometimes. Oh, how'd your day go, brother, sister? Well, you know, just another day. <laughs> really? Can I pray for you? No, it's okay. They're trying to hold your hand up, and you're acting like the world just come to an end. Amen? You come into church expecting to be revived, expecting to be joy, expecting to be uplifted, and go up to somebody and say, Hey, my day stunk. How did your day go? Do it with a smile, amen? Man, my grandchildren, my co-workers, my leader, the people who work for me, man, you just don't know what I went through today. But praise God, I'm in the house of the Lord tonight! And I get to be around you! It's a good thing, amen? It's Wednesday night. Thank you for being here. The Cavs are playing at 9. we got to hurry. But anyway... <laughs> Cincinnati Reds are starting too. Who's, who told me I needed to hurry? But anyway. Uh, uh, but no. Wednesday night's the best time to be in church. Why? Because most of you wanted to be here. Some of you crawled through the door to get here. Some of you, it's hump day and it's in the middle of the week. You've been through the battle. And Saturday's too far off. Amen? Come in here. Smile at each other. Tell somebody you love them. And mean it. Hold somebody's hands up. Go up to the preacher and say, Preacher, we really enjoyed that tonight. No, don't say that. <laughs> say, Preacher, the Lord blessed me through the message tonight. Amen. Amen. Say, Preacher, God spoke to me tonight. Thank you. Look at somebody and say, Man, I'm glad I got to see you tonight. Amen. So glad to see you tonight. She's been having these problems and stuff. What a blessing that said oh, we've been praying for you. How you doing? I'm doing better. Praise God. Amen. That, that, that was good, good. Amen. Got to see my cousin tonight. Amen. And the other ones. Amen. And, and I. If you just knew what I knew. Amen. Well. If you knew what he knew. Amen. But anyway. Look. You know what I've seen tonight? I've seen somebody's life changed, amen? I've seen two lives, I've seen three lives changed. I've seen five lives changed. I don't know you. So anyway, 
But I do know this, every time I see him, he's got a smile on his face. He's either faking it or he's real. I don't know, amen? But I do know this, praise God, I'm here tonight with you. I need my arms uplifted sometimes. And you uphold my arms that don't even know it, amen? I met somebody before church and we just talked. And, and just going through some of the things that God had done and encouraged me, brother, encouraged me. I felt like my arms had gotten lifted up a little bit. Amen? You know how we strengthen our hands? By holding somebody's arms up. Amen? Why are they laughing? (laughs) By holding somebody's arms up. Amen? I don't know why they laughed, Dave. I thought it was a good illustration. Amen? But anyway, lifting arms up. Amen? Thank you for leading songs tonight. I don't know that wasn't easy. Amen? Thank you for being here tonight. James, thank you for letting me mess with you. It was great, amen? It's awesome. Sitting at the back door talking to people as they come in. You know why I do that? Because you're encouraging to me. Man, I love being here. I feel like I've had my arms lifted up tonight. Have you? You ought to just go up to somebody tonight and say, you know, I really don't know you, but is there anything I can pray for you? And we don't need a gossip session. This is there anything? Yeah, there's a couple things you can pray for me. Let me pray. And reach right out there and pray with them right then and there. Amen. Don't wait because you know you're not going to do it. Amen. I'll pray for you when I get home tonight. Calves are playing. I'm going out to eat afterwards. Sorry, you didn't get prayed for. But if you need something right now, we'll pray for you. You see what I'm saying? Lift some arms up tonight. Amen. Lift some arms up tonight. How do we strengthen our hands? One, through the Bible, through prayer, through giving, through holding hands up. Amen? And the fifth thing tonight and the last thing. Go with me to Luke chapter 19, verse 2. And there's that story about Zacchaeus. Amen? Luke chapter 19, verse 2. Zacchaeus was a government worker, a publican. He stole from people. He just was not a good person. But he heard Jesus was coming. And it says he was of little stature, so he climbed up into a tree, a sycamore tree, so he could see Jesus. Amen? Isn't that awesome? How many of us would go out of our way like that to see Jesus? Amen? Luke chapter 19, verse 2 says, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Isn't that awesome? Joyfully, amen. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Praise God, on May 29th, 1986, Jesus came into my house and sat down next to a sinner. Who rose up, still a sinner, but saved by grace. Amen? And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I had taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him full fold. Notice what he did there. It was an act of repentance. It was an act of obedience unto God's Word. It was an act. But in verse 9 of Luke chapter 19, Jesus says this. He didn't notice all that stuff. What He noticed was this. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as He also also is a son of Abraham. Look at verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. If you don't get anything tonight, listen to this statement. It is easier to turn a blind eye than to see the need. It's easier to turn a blind eye than to see the lost. It's easier to turn a blind eye than to see the need of the church and of of the world that is dying. It's easier to turn a blind eye and forget that it's even there than to stand up and say, I will build. The fifth one. How do we strengthen our hands? Through soul winning. 
through soul winning. See, if we're in the Bible, and if we're praying, and we're giving, and we're holding up to each other's hands up, you cannot help but become somebody that is burdened for a lost and dying world. Now, I told you not I was going to encourage you in missions, right? This is my encouragement in missions. There is no way you can get a burden for Lighthouse Baptist Church in Okinawa until you get a burden for your own church. And when you get a burden for this church and for the people around it and for the people in your area and for the people at work and school and everything else, you will be able to get a burden for the Daves, for the Jacobs, for the Whites, for Brother Joe, who I can't even pronounce his last name, but it's a good one, amen? You can't get a burden for those people until you get a burden for each other and for your church, amen? Come to church expecting to receive something. Not come to church expecting, well, I hope it gets done quick, amen? Well, I checked the block, I can go home now. Well, I came and I was Saul, so nobody will call me this week and bug me. No, you came today. I hope to receive the word of God. So that I could say the world's in distress. And then you could respond with, let us rise up and build. Let us rise up and build. But you can't do it with weak hands. You've got to have strong hands. Say, well... In my physical, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You know, that has nothing to do with physical strength. It has everything to do with spiritual strength. And if you serve the same God I have, with the same word of God I have, with the same Holy Spirit that I have, who can stop you? The Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible says the gates of hell can't prevail against us. The Bible says a lot of stuff that is good, that is encouraging, and that God wants you to know. Can I tell you tonight, Bible Baptist Church, thank you for being here on a Wednesday night. I, I, really, I really mean that. But can I also tell you this? Bible Baptist Church isn't done. It has not seen its best days. I'm not saying this because I'm trying to get any points or anything, but you have a pastor that loves you, yes. prays for you, works hard for you. you got a pastor that I would love to have. You think we come around here just for the fun of it because you have a nice missions department? You know how many missions department is in this place that I could actually stay at? You know why we come here? Because this is a good work. Because this is a good work. And it's strong. And it preaches the word of God. And I just would like to help you and encourage you tonight to strengthen your hands for this good work. Father, we love you and we give you praise tonight. Father, I thank you for the patience and, and the attentiveness of the people tonight. But Father, I hope they didn't hear a preacher tonight. I hope they heard from heaven tonight. I pray that they heard your word tonight. And Lord, as this invitation comes forward, the only question is, do they see this world in distress and are they willing to stand up and say, let's build? And Father, are they willing to take the challenge of strengthening their hands? But Lord, more importantly, there may be someone here that does not know you as their Savior tonight. And Lord, there's preachers all over this place. Brother Yoder, Xavier, uh, Brother Xavier, Brother uh, uh, Moreland and, 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 and Brother Woods, and, and there's people all over this place, uh, ladies, that could lead people to the Lord. So Lord, if they're lost here tonight, may that be the first order of business. But Lord, if they are saved, Lord, may they stand up tonight and say no more excuses, no more reasons, no more hesitation. But I will strengthen my hands for this good work so that we can rise up and build something that's for your glory, for your honor, for your praise, because you are my God. And my God's been so good upon me. My God's been so gracious to me. My God who saved me 
who is now preparing me a place in heaven that's going to come back and get me, that's going to spend a millennium with me, and then go into eternity with me. Father, may you receive the honor in our hearts and our souls tonight. Father, block out all the negative and let us be positive tonight that you are able. Father, we love you and we give you praise.